Alrighty then, let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> Solo, a Star Wars story. I finally seen it. I have been watching like literally almost every single anything related to freaking Star Wars. Like for some reason it became my obsession overnight. Like for the past like what few goddamn <laughs> weeks I have been like immersed in Star Wars lore. Of course Anakin Skywalker is my favorite character still. Anyway, let's get into this. So, how do I put this, man? The movie was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Like, truth be told. Like, me personally, I didn't really enjoy the the sequels and shit like that. I really didn't, of course. And many people haven't. I didn't enjoy it because it's like... It was trying to bank off a of purely fan service and they forgot what made those moments special in the first place. But I'm getting off topic. So, let me get back to Solo. <clears throat> what can I say? Number one, the CGI was actually amazing. Like, it felt like a Star Wars movie. Like, I can't stress that enough. It felt like it was a Star Wars movie. Like, from the fucking racers, the speeders, the freaking mercenaries, the bounty hunters, that little tidbit with Aura Singh from the Clone Wars. I enjoyed that immensely because it tied everything together and it made all those events canon and it let me know that even yes it's a prequel but it's a good prequel like solo is probably the best star wars prequel i've seen since revenge of the sith i know right still my favorite star wars movie and possibly my favorite movie in general ever anyway so uh it starts off with um a uh, young han solo of course you know he's he's running a little smuggling operation or whatever the hell working for this weird slug lady creature thingy or whatever and i'm like okay that's nice or whatever and apparently she has the same effect as albino zoo she can't step into the sunlight for some reason it's weird and but it's aliens and i don't judge anyway um fast forward to uh, him being in the super academy he's training to be a stormtrooper or something like that from what i can remember and then like these smugglers kind of like like fade into the background and like he's asking the right questions and stuff so he almost gets killed by chewbacca by the way also that's how they met I like how they're exploring everything with Han's life, bro. Like, they're explaining on how he met Chewbacca, how he is what he is, how he got the Millennium Falcon. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, yeah, he's basically trying to convince him to take him with him or whatever. You know, he got he's a bad pilot or whatever, which he is, surprisingly. I thought he was just saying it, and then his skills, like, slowly progress. But, no, he's actually a great-ass pilot. Like, And what else? Okay, uh, on to the, the little, the little, um, they were fine, they were trying to find some, like, refined fuel cells or something like that, and I, I did like, I liked the little, the little heist type of storytelling, I do, I really do, I enjoy that kind of thing, it's like Mission Impossible vibes, but in Star Wars, like, that was awesome, and the quote-unquote Marauders, that we'll actually get more information about, but it's just like, yo, everything about the story I enjoy, like, and then the music choices was, of course, nostalgic as everything else I could think of. So, yeah, that was awesome. Um, fast forward to the Lando Calrissian scenes. And I don't care what you say about uh, Donald Glover. He, he was perfect as Lando Calrissian. He had the charisma. He looked the part for the most part. Like, honestly, he's, he, he, he's a great actor and people sleep on him a lot. I, honestly. Also, his songs are pretty good, too. Anyway, um, aside from the Lando Calrissian stuff that was always awesome and I always enjoyed it to to the fullest degree, um, what else can I say? Um, as a whole, the movie was amazing. Uh, the, the love plot felt semi-useless, especially because the whole Leia situation, like, everything about that love story just felt, like, unnecessary and forced. And don't get me wrong, it's like I still found slight enjoyment and it did give the story a necessary tension or whatever, but it was like she was really unnecessary to the story as a whole, if you think about it, like timeline wise, she doesn't really matter. You know, I'm pretty sure her mall <laughs> got rid of her at the end of the movie. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh so yeah, uh the droid was nice, the little freedom fighter droid. I like that. The whole eco rights thing with droids, even though we all know that's never gonna happen. Anyway, um, 
aside from all the great stuff, the, I don't really have any gripes. Like, the, the composure was great. Like, I loved every soundtrack in the, in it, mostly because it was just either, like, probably, like, remixed versions of the originals. And, like, bro, everything fat into place. Like, and also, where did Han learn Wookiee? I feel like that should have been explored a little bit more. Like, how? Like, was he on the Wookiee planet for some amount of time? But how did he ever learn to speak any type of Wookiee whatsoever? Like, honestly. Also, I love how this movie never relies on Vader in the slightest. Like, yes, we already know we're in the end times now. Like, this is the Empire in, like, the peak of its, like, power at this current time. So it's like, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. Like, this is probably the, the first Star Wars movie that probably never even referenced Vader once. Like, I like how he's trying to stand on his own two feet until we get to the end. Now, that part. Also, Woody Harrison is great. I think that's the actor who, who plays um, um, Han's, like, partner in crime along with um, that weird space monkey. Also, he was a treat, and he died off so quickly, and it was really unnecessary. Why give a charismatic character like that just, like, a few minutes of screen time just to kill him off? Like, honestly, he was a great character. It missed opportunity. And it really shows why Han Solo never really trusted anybody in, in, in Star Wars and why he was all about himself and money and stuff like that. Even though, despite all that, it showed what he really would become in, like, the future, of course, you know. And it really has plays a lot into the story that Han actually has something to do with the Rebellion before it was even formed, right? He basically helped the Rebellion form, and I, and I like that little bit of information. It was really great. I enjoyed that. And now we're on to the end. I want to skip ahead here. Also, I would like to say, Vision was amazing in this movie. Like, really menacing. Really played that really like psychotic character down pat to a T. Like, he really could snap on you at any second. He's very impulsive. I like that. He was a good. He was a good character. I enjoyed that. And now fast forward to the end, where the climactic battle, if you would, uh, ensued. Everything about that was awesome. Also, I, I loved, again, I can't stress this enough, Donald Glover's performance as Lando Calrissian was amazing. Everything he said, I was just always like, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes. Anyway, uh, I, again, I love how Vader is never even mentioned once or twice or anything. And then we get to the end where the faded hollow, pro, hollow projection plays. And, of course, it's Dark freaking Maul himself with his Clone Wars actor. I freaking love that. And I love the tidbit. Again, everything fits together with the Clone Wars. I like that. Like, seriously, he had the same little du dual wielded lightsaber stuff he had. Like, honestly, bro. That was awesome. I always found that, like, like bro. Hearing him speak for that amount of time, I don't care how short it was. It was amazing. I love Darth Maul. Best character in Star Wars and the most recognizable villain, bar none. Anyway. Um that's the dancing uh, hand. I like the little nod that Maul's pretty much gonna kill this girl, like whenever he heads to death whenever she goes to Dathomir, like I, you can tell that she ain't gonna make it. And obviously if she did, then there wouldn't be no Han and Leia. So clearly she dies from that encounter, so that that's nice. Uh, at least it got rid of her before it became like a plot hole. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the full review or whatever. It was a really good movie. Like, honestly, it was a great movie. Uh, I don't know what's to hate for it. I really don't. But uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're new. And see y'all to the next video. Um, I wanted to get this out of the way cause, like, before, so I don't forget the events of the movie. Uh, and yeah, also love the origin story for the uh, Millennium Falcon. That was really nice. Like, I love that. Anyway, I'm going to see y'all later. Hope y'all have a good one. Also, oh, real quick, before I go, the Tatooine thing, it bothered me. Because like, I was like, bro, are we going to see, like, babe, are we going to see, like, a younger Luke now? Like, are we going to get that too? Might as well. But no, we didn't get anything like that. And like I said, it was mostly a Han story. So, like, it only made sense. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, see you in the video. I'm going to see y'all later. Bye.